Hi guys and welcome back. Today I am going to be working on this little watercolor painting and while I do that I want to talk about one little tactic that I use when I'm really struggling to come up with an idea of what to draw or paint. I find that this technique almost always ends up coming through for me when I'm really struggling and it's very simple and it's not it's not always going to work. I'll give that caveat. It really does depend on where you're at at the moment, but I find that very often the struggles that I end up butting up against as I'm trying to come up with an idea, this technique helps me break through some of those. So the technique, very simple. I just like to come up with several concepts that I find interesting and force myself to combine them. I know it sounds quite rudimentary, but I find that for me very often when I am struggling to come up with an idea, it's not because absolutely nothing sounds interesting, but it feels like I've already done that or I've already explored that or that alone isn't interesting enough. So by incorporating new concepts or even different concepts that I have already done together, it does help open up new doorways, new paths, new ways to connect those two things together that I may not have done before. And in all reality, the outcome very well may not be something incredibly novel compared to what I have done or what I see other artists doing, but all it really needs is to create a spark in, in myself, in my desire to draw. It just has to make me feel like there's something to pursue, something interesting to chase after, and that's enough. And then I can dive into the process, I can enjoy it, I can get into doing research and figuring out different iterative ideas on how to combine those things. And as I do that, I, I get more and more new ideas. I get more connected to the concept that I'm working on. And then I find that I've broken through that fear of not knowing what to draw. But I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that. We can delve a little more into at least my process when I'm working this way for me to, to actually break through it. It's, it's a really unpleasant and uncomfortable place to be in when you want to draw, but nothing is just connecting. Nothing feels worthwhile to put your attention into. This piece is actually available at my shop, the original. So if you'd like to own her, there's a link down in the description that'll take you right over to my shop. And she is also one of three of the Patreon sticker pack tier. So if you'd like to get the sticker pack for June, make sure to sign up for either the sticker pack tier or the print tier by the very last day of June and you'll be able to get it. I am really excited about this set. I've been really enjoying creating it. So, so don't forget that. There's a link again to the Patreon, my Patreon down in the description, but there's also the link to my shop as well. I actually end up running into this problem almost every single time it comes to working on a new piece or a new project in general. I, I don't know what it is, but when I stare at that blank page or that empty file on my computer, it's just, it, it feels like I have done everything, everything that I'm interested in and I cannot just bite my teeth into anything. It just feels totally pointless <laughs> to start working on something. I hate that feeling. I hate it so much, but I end up running into it all of the time, very, very frequently. And thankfully, after years of facing this kind of dilemma, I've come up with some tools that help me, like this technique. And I find that in a lot of cases, it feels more like a trick than a real strategy. Like it's more like tricking my brain <laughs> into feeling like I'm doing something new and interesting, but, but it works and I am not going to complain about that or pick it apart. But, but yeah, the, the, the basic tactic for me is I'll, I'll come up with one concept that's a little bit more robust, something that I can base more of a character off of. Like this, this piece that I'm working on, it's part of the sticker set for Patreon. So I had to do three or I get to do three. I'm excited to work on them, but, but it was part of a series. So it was more than just this one. And I decided that I wanted to delve a little bit more into Victorian and Edwardian fashion. I love the silhouettes. There's something really interesting about it. So that's semi new. I've never really focused on that alone. So that was my, my like cornerstone one. That's what I was gonna build up on. But then I decided that I wanted to incorporate 
a little bit of a ghostly quality to the characters, which again is very, very not new for me. I think I do that almost every time or every other time at, at minimum. But it's something that I know that I love. I love incorporating that and it helps me from straying too far. So if I come up with a novel idea that's something new and different, and I'm not sure if it really feels like me or fits with the kind of work that I want to do, if I marry it with something that I know is tried and true and I come back to it over and over again, I know immediately I'm going to feel like it's going to be able to be my work. It's going to feel like the outcome will be mine. So I decided to combine those two and pushing it forward a little bit more. I pushed it into, I wanted to give the the characters a little bit more of an alternative kind of style. So they had non-traditional colored hair and tattoos, at least the next piece that I'm going to be working on. She'll have a really nice big neck tattoo. And uh, that was, that was it. That was the spark that set me off in my direction. I was interested. I was excited about it. There was a kernel of something new focusing on that type of fashion specifically. It gave me something to research and get interested in, but it also gave me those tried and true things I love to revisit so that I knew that it was going to be something that, that I wouldn't create and then think, wow, I really <laughs> I regretted that because it just took me on the wrong path. And a couple months ago, or ugh, maybe it's been a year now, time really flies, but I started a master list of things that I find even vaguely interesting. And I just write everything down in that list. That has been so enjoyable to work with. I'll put things down like color combinations or emotions, weather, uh, things like the fashion that I was focusing on today, or just the, the specific shape of things like a crescent moon. How can I incorporate that differently into a new piece? It's just, it's all over the place. It's just these little kernels of inspiration that I'll notice while I'm living my life and I can write it down and then it allows me to revisit it when it comes time to actually creating artwork. I have a terrible, terrible memory. I cannot recall things like that well at all. So I wouldn't be able to necessarily sit down and come up with those things that I found as inspiration in my life. I feel like they'd pretty much be gone, many of them. So being able to write them down, revisit it, look at it, combine them, start mixing them up, that has really changed the process of this, this uncomfortable, unpleasant starting point into a little bit more of a game in, in how can I combine things to, to be something really interesting and how can I get that excitement built up. And honestly, sometimes I'll get to the end of this, of trying to come with a come up with an idea of combining different things and it just, it still doesn't stick. I still don't really feel it. I don't feel like I have a good idea. And I find that sometimes I just have to make myself do it. This isn't always the answer. Sometimes the answer is you need to step away and not make any art. But I find that for me, I tend to overthink things, overthink if it's worth drawing, if it's novel enough. I put more weight on whether it's valuable for me to draw than I want to. So knowing myself and how I tend to work, I know that if I get to that point and I'm still just not feeling it, sometimes I just need to force myself to do it. I have to look at it as if it were an assignment or a job that I have to fulfill. And I just need to find a way to make it as interesting as possible to make it something that I can sink my teeth into if it's just incorporating a new technique or a more challenging reference, then sometimes that's just the answer is that if I am just not feeling this new idea or any new idea, I need to give myself a little bit of a challenge, keep it in that theme and make some art. And almost always I'll be able to get into the rhythm of actually creating a piece and enjoying that process. And then the execution just feels more and more interesting and it just sucks me in. So that helps. But again, this is all just about figuring out what works best for you, where you're at currently with your struggles with coming up with an idea, how burnt out you might be or how much you feel like you need to get back to working whether you're procrastinating or not. It's just a lot of very introspective things you can look at to figure out where you're at, what you need. For me, I tend to just need to keep moving forward. But let's talk a little bit about this painting. So 
I have uh, noticed <laughs> that I've been really enjoying very granulating paints lately, which I've actually really generally avoided up until now. I liked being able to completely control the watercolors and get very smooth washes, but I, I think it was a couple pieces ago that I just did a little one for myself. I used really granulating handmade watercolors and I loved the effect. It was really rich and interesting to look at and it is making me want to actually figure out how to incorporate that more into everything that I do. It, it brings new interest, new challenges for watercolors and some more forward momentum for me, which is exciting. So yeah, let me know. Will you leave some comments? Tell me what your favorite granulating paints are. I'd love to hear it. I know that Daniel Smith in particular, that brand, they make a ton of granulating paints in particular, and I have a few of them. I love them, like uh, Rose of Ultramarine, is that what it's called? Anyways, they have a lot. I really love a lot of them. So so yeah, <laughs> let me know. What are your, your favorite granulating paints? Which ones have contrasting pigments that really separate? Which ones, which ones feel subtle? I just, I'd love to know. I want to expand my collection. Uh, but yeah, I, I loved painting this one. I did get really sucked into the theme. I think that I actually want to explore more with Victorian and Edwardian fashion. There's just something very, I don't know how to put it. Maybe, it, maybe it just like, reminds me of Memento Mori and the jewelry that they used for that. And that's something that I have done a lot of research in in the past and I've been really interested in. So actually delving into that time period, that style of dress, I, th I think it would be really interesting and I'd enjoy it. And I, again, I actually find that a lot of the silhouettes can be really interesting. So yeah, I'm just coming up with so many ideas. I'm really excited actually to explore that, especially that style in combination with tattoos and bright colored hair. I just, uh, I think it's gonna be really fun. So I've been trying to convince myself to indulge more when I'm working on these paintings with allowing myself to use like special effect paints more. So I used to use gold paint all the time towards the beginning of when I was putting my work out there, I would do my inktobers with this really rich gold paint and I loved it and I have I have iridescent paints, I have these interference paints and glittery paints. There's just a ton that I actually have that I love. I am really drawn to them and I love what they do to a painting. I love working with them. It just feels so magical and transformative, but I've found that over the years I've used them less and less. I, I know it's because I've been I've been steering towards making prints easier to photograph and or prints, <laughs> making them more easy to be photographed and also making them easier to be prints. So that's a problem. I want to enjoy the process more. I want to be able to make the art for myself and enjoy the creation of it. And then I know that the outcome is going to be even better. So it's been a little bit of a convincing process of me reminding myself at the end of the piece, is there somewhere that I would enjoy adding that that I think would actually enhance the piece in a tasteful manner? And this piece, I did. I added it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what paint it actually was. I'll list it down below so you can look it up if you're interested, but it's gorgeous. It's a glittery paint. Uh, it has like blues and purples and it just has a lot of different shades to it. So it has a lot of life and interest to it. And I loved using it in this piece. It was really... It was really fun. It just feels like I'm getting back to my roots of what kind of art I actually enjoy creating. Don't forget this painting is available at my shop. If you'd like the original, she is listed. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there. And if you get the original, you get to see all that beautiful shiny paint, which I love. I love how it turned out. But if you like the sticker version of her, you can also make sure to sign up for the sticker pack tier or the print tier over on my Patreon and you'll get her and two more stickers and a print if you sign up for that tier <laughs> over on my Patreon. Just make sure to sign up by the last day of June. That's when it gets locked in and that's it for today. So thank you so much to all of my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are absolutely incredible. I can't thank you enough for your support and that's it. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.